Ooh. Oh my goodness. Let's hope this works out. There have been some major improvements. YouTube, YouTube, get the data. Come on, YouTube. Sending data to YouTube. Still no data to YouTube. Come on. Hey, Kalen, I am doing well and we are live on YouTube. Fantastic. It, uh, it was a good day. It was a good day. I, uh, I set up my new router, my new modem. I upgraded my internet from 500 megabits per second to 1200 megabits per second. So, uh, there were some big changes. Ooh, please let me know if this music is too loud. I'm going to start with some hype up music. If you have not checked this out yourself, this is the Cirrus Music Remix by Attention. It is beautiful. Hey, Garf, how are you doing today? Oof. Yeah, they keep dropping the Path of Exile 1 quality of life teasers. It's absolutely phenomenal. I mean, <clears throat> what are they going to do next? Seriously. Is it doors open automatically now? Hello, Bremsack. How are you doing today? Yeah, everybody, on today's stream, we essentially are going to be hopefully finalizing most of the questions for the Jonathan Rogers interview, which is going to be a good interview. Okay, everybody? Reach Gaming had his interview yesterday, and the reception there was mixed. Okay, obviously Preach is not someone who is entrenched in the Path of Exile community. He played it for the first time last year, I believe. He did a full playthrough on Twitch with no real prior knowledge, and he kind of blew up. Uh, really. GGG noticed him, flew him out to ExileCon and everything. So, people really enjoyed it, but people who commonly enjoyed Path of Exile weren't huge fans of his interview, I'd say. Maybe you guys disagree. Let me know. Hello, Elesterka. Yes, the Path of Exile 2 content creator. Don't let the YouTube commenters hear you say that, because I said that once and I received lots of backlash. <laughs> Hey, Vandal Prime, how you doing tonight? New Axe Productions, no campaign skip, sucks try. I'm only on my third league and I'm skipping. <laughs> well, 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 well. I need to fix that right there. I'm going to put the, the chat right down here. Okay, now we're good. Uh, you're only on your third league and you're tired of the campaign. Okay, so my viewpoint on this is the campaign is, is vital. It's a part of the game that the designers are spending lots of time on. It's the first thing that lots of players will see, and it's something that the developers know will be static every single league. In a game like Path of Exile, where leagues are so varying, league to league, you need some stability there, and the campaign serves as that. Instead of people the developers allowing people to just skip by it and saying, yeah, it's essentially crap. It's always going to be crap. We just want you to go through and not play it. I think they're really trying to make PB2's campaign as interesting as possible so that you don't want to skip it so that it's the beginning point for your character. Like I said in today's video that, wow, the engagement there was kind of insane. The views were kind of mid, but the engagement was insane. People have opinions on this. Um, so I appreciate that they're taking a firm stance and I really think they're trying to make as compelling a campaign as possible. Now, how they exactly do that? Well, that's what I'm going to try to hone in on my interview with Jonathan. Hey, Lord Alexander. Oh God. Oh no. Oh, Lord Alexander the 16th, I think that was. Thank you for the prime so much. Oof. Hey, Fernando Lama, Lima. Hey, Kiyosamak. Honey Roo, Rai, you like my background? This is my, yeah, this is my room and it's real. 
This isn't a green screen, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna show all of you. Okay, right? Real. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is like a physical object right here. Um, no. Oh, another prime. Thanks, um, Karash, for the prime. Thank you so much. Got like real objects here. I can actually pick up. This chaos orb. Oh, we've got a hype train going. I have a chaos orb here that my brother-in-law got me for Christmas. It was my favorite gift. It's beautiful. It's uh, it's not too heavy, but it's starting the orb collection. So I'm going to have to get a lot more of them. Most definitely. I need the divine orb. I need the exalted orb. Actually, speaking of orbs, everybody, uh, in Twitch chat especially... Uh, are you seeing that I have a whole bunch of orbs now as uh, all the, the different like subscriber levels and the bits? Kaylin, dude, thanks for subscribing, man. Hey, Patreon and Twitch. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm Karash. I am pumping out the content. I'm trying to do a video a day, honestly. And when I'm in, uh, when I'm in LA, I'm going to keep doing the videos. I, uh, I got adapters for my microphone and my camera, so I will be taking everything to Los Angeles. <laughs> you like the Lord of the Ring gifts, Fernando? Right, my green screen interaction is quite immersive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Zach Nick FMP, ask them about servers at launch. I hope they won't make the same mistake as last epoch. Man, I really don't think they're going to make that mistake. They're... They're... They're a veteran company at this point, everybody. They've dealt with their fair share of big launches. I don't think they're going to have that problem at all with PUE2. In the slightest. Zaka Luca! Hey, thanks for becoming a YouTube member, man. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Kiyosamak, will Divine and Chaos Orb still be the general currency for PUE2? That is a curious question, and we actually have that as one of the questions on the list for Jonathan. We are going to ask about how currency orbs, since they're no longer spammable, they're probably going to be rarer, right? So does that mean that chaos orbs are actually going to be more powerful? Uh, I think so. I think so. So they, they might become the de facto exalts or divines, and divines might even be rarer. It'll be crazy. Truly. Uh, people, let me know. I'm looking at the stream right now. I made a lot of optimizations. I haven't seen us drop below 60 FPS, which is awesome. If you see the quality dip, please make sure to let me know. I want to make sure everything is good to go for the Jonathan interview. Aim Crash, ask for party emotes like hug or high five for the meme. Man, that's probably going to be in a Path of Exile 1 or Path of Exile 2 supporter pack sometime soon. They're doing some crazy stuff with those. I wouldn't be surprised if the memes were coming in with the supporter packs. Yeah, on launch, POE1 had far worse server issues. Totally agree. Okay. If you're talking to me, Bam Sutler, nah, I love you, man. Love you too. Hey, Shikadu. How you doing? Okay. Toucan meme microtransaction says you're wrong. Well... I'm so sorry, but you may have missed out. There was actually a bloody or cursed toucan as the ultimatum league challenge reward. I think it was number 24. A pet. Mm. Vandal Prime, the lockstep lag is still there. Please ask if they will improve that at Talkative Track. Are you an EU, Vandal? Oh, is EU is having a ton of problems. I See... The interview with Jonathan, I'm going to be focusing on Path of Exile 2 fully. I'm really not going to do what other interviewers have done, and no shade to them, seriously. But I am going to be talking about Path of Exile 2 exclusively and that game exclusively. So problems with PUE 1, especially modern problems or recent problems, I'm, I'm not going to delve into those, you guys. You know, we have some things here that do kind of relate to Path of Exile 1 now that I'm looking at the list right here. But stuff like, oh, the EU server issues. I'm not going to go in on them about that. And it's not because I I don't want to not assault the devs, devs or whatever. It's because I want to talk about PUE 2 and just PUE 2. Yeah, there's a dance emote. My diet, Gwith. Uh, chicken and rice and protein shakes and fruit. Usually mangoes, frozen mangoes. 
Uh, yeah, there's a toucan, but we can't get it again. It sucks. Fernando Lima, thank you. I will keep doing me. And I will keep up the great content and the positivity. That is me. Zach Nick? Well, I don't know what I'm going to start yet because the patch notes haven't hit. But if you did not play Cleave of Rage last league, I'd heavily recommend that. That was a phenomenal build. And I loved it. And as long as there's no significant nerfs, I will be doing a build guide for it. I have had at least 40 people ask me about it. And there, there were some other guides out there, but I'll give my own unique take on it. Mm. New Axe Productions, is your interview dropping the day of or later because of the NDA? So New Axe, there's two different events that uh, I'll be a part of, essentially. So we've got the Exile Meet, as it has been coined by GGG, in which uh, I'm under NDA. I'm going to fly out to LA. I'm going to play PUE2. I'm going to get FaceTime with the developers. It's, it's going to be a big room. We're all going to be playing PUE2, essentially recording footage. And the devs will be there, including Jonathan Rogers. And you can just walk up to him and ask him questions while you're playing. And I think he's dedicating some time to every creator. I think like 10, 15 minutes, something like that. And then that's on, that's on March 18th. Okay. And then a week after that, on March 25th, Monday, I will be live streaming an interview with Jonathan Rogers at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern. So right now, essentially, uh, on March 25th, it's one-on-one -on -one, as far as I know. I don't, I don't think anybody else is going to be there. And we're just going to be talking about PUE2. It's going to be live. I've aim crash. Thinking up questions got to be tough. No, I've got an awesome community. People in the Discord, people in these Twitch streams, they've been helping me a lot. And I had quite a few questions I wanted already. We're going to look at them in just a moment. I know I already said what we we're going to do the stream, but I'm just getting acquainted as we're sitting here. Neutro 59 great question. Does anyone here know how socket colors work? Oh, Coombs, thanks for the prime, man. Uh, back to the question. Uh, does anyone here know how socket colors work in PV2? So every item still drops with sockets, but they can be deterministically changed. How are colors on dropped items determined in the first place? Neutro, that's a great question. I'd imagine it might be on the gem type, you know, like um, a arc gem might start with drop with blues primarily at first, and then you can deterministically change them to greens or reds or whatever. Mm. Zhang, yeah. I I'm, I'm curious, has anyone played PoE1 since the engine update? I'm going to test it on this stream in a little bit to see how it goes. <laughs> AK Pluto, thank you for calling me a W YouTuber. Yeah, everybody who didn't see that in the chat, uh, you can spam the exclamation point countdown command to see how long until the Path of Exile 2 closed beta. Currently, we have two months, 24 days, 12 hours, 45 minutes, and 54 seconds based on historical patch times. New Axe Productions. Yes, I hope you are all here on the 25th, everyone. So uh, just, just back to that for a brief moment. When I was watching the Preach interview yesterday, and I saw, you know, I think Quinn was watching, a ton of other PoE streamers were watching. There were 4,000 people on Twitch alone. Woo! The nerves started building up inside of me. Just watching and reading the chat and all that. Whew. I just have to be level-headed, uh, expectations set, not have chat on during the interview, and just focus completely on Jonathan during that time. It's it's going to be one of my biggest challenges yet. I've never done anything of this magnitude before. And I'm so honored by GGG for giving me the opportunity and all of you for supporting me. It's, it's going to be quite something. Mm. Tube, is GGG streaming the Exile Meet? No, they are not. Nope. Everything is under embargo. Until after the 21st. On the 21st. Yeah, that's why you got cash clean, clean up, aim crash. Yeah, there was an engine update on PoE1. Uh, DirectX 12 is now out of beta. 
Vandal Prime, that's correct. Uh, sockets are no longer tied to gear, and I think you start, you think you're right, with nine gem sockets, but gems still have colors, I believe. So you can socket in a green gem into your character, but that gem will still have colors attached to it. So it can have three greens, so one green, one blue, one red, so on and so forth. They look insanely nice, High Guy Tomas. Uh, I, I gotta log in then. I gotta check it out. Mm. They did that yesterday. Thanks for the follow, Six Piriat. Mm. Yeah, you guys, I'm gonna be super prepared. I'm gonna have at least 30 questions for the interview. Diggy Flaps, thanks for being a fellow exile. Yeah, I, uh, they said two hours minimum. So I'm going to go two hours, and if they'll go longer, then I'll go longer too. I'm going to have quite the repository of questions. Public speaking is fun, Stephen James. Yes. I'm a huge fan of it. I'm getting better and better. A lot of my videos now are unscripted. I'm sure people notice that. I'm really trying to prove that I'm not try AI. I'm just try. Diggly Flaps, yo, try. Hello, I'm super hyped to see you popping off in the PeeWee cre creator scene. Congrats on all your success. Looking forward to the interview with the man himself. He is the man himself now. Guys, so before we go into the questions and uh, do a little bit more prep, what do you think about Jonathan Rogers so far? I think he's come. Well, I'll, uh, I'll read the chat for a sec. One sec. I get to see how long the delay is here. Hmm. Zach Nick FM, he is grounded man. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's true. 100 percent He's a Giga Chad, okay, from virtual gaming. Right? Right. He's a god compared to Rod Ferguson. All right, all right, all right. I know, I know. D4 bad. D4 bad. I have a silly, silly video. Uh, I recognize your name, Steven. I probably do know more about this game. I think there's more to know about the game than trucks. I No shade to trucks. But this game is deep. Incredibly deep. They, I've been playing for ooh, uh, five years, and I would still consider myself a novice. Trucks, though. Also been doing those for five years. Know quite a bit about trucks. Yeah, Elistrica, I'm going for a 5% me talking. 95, that is not right. Whatever. 95% Jonathan talking. I'm really just going to be asking questions and then getting him to elaborate, having follow-ups, really trying to hone in on any new information that he'll provide with us. Voided visuals, love your stuff, man. Keep it up. Thanks so much, dude. I'm keeping it up 100%. Diggly Flaps, I'm curious to know what role Chris will be playing. Hey, hey, POE card game. I, I could not believe that when I was coming up with a name for it, I thought of like bestiary or menagerie or metamorph. It could just be called like divination or divine or prophecy. Prophecy, the POE card game. Can't you obey? Come on, somebody do the, somebody make some art. Come on. <laughs> Silver. Hey, Silver. Nice to see you in the chat, man. He's passionate, and that's all we need from our fearless leader. True. Booms, I miss Chris. Jonathan is growing on me. Okay. Diggly Flaps, you went insane. Thanks for the prime, man. I appreciate it. 99 Rage, 92 Death. The interview with Jonathan is on the 25th of March, um, but the event itself that we're also prepping for is on Monday, the 18th. Hmm. Shikadu, that's one of my questions for Jonathan. Would they do any changes to Pee Wee 2 League challenges, the 40 ones? Yeah, I'm asking, uh, essentially, hey, you guys already had like a battle pass before Dota 2, and it was completely free, and you kept it going over and over and over. Are you going to change that for Pee Wee 2? Because it's pretty great. I really like the cosmetic reward system of the 40 challenges. Literally no out-of-game assistance, all in the game. You have to earn it yourself or buy stuff from TFT. Um, but it's great regardless. Yeah, when I was reading the comments about that card game, a lot of people were losing their minds, saying they would lose their minds. 
Oh my gosh, a Lester Ka. It's going to be called Talisman. Oh, oh my God. Dude, you're right. <laughs> oh, does Jonathan play with his hair a lot, Muse? Raisin Guns, will they show a fast gameplay of PUE 2? Well, from what I know, and this isn't under embargo or anything, some people have said, you know, maybe, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's under, we just got a new tweet, sorry, we got a new tweet from Path of Exile, uh, they're talking about what happens to Affliction when it ends, will Affliction go core, I want predictions in the chat, uh, Australian Samurai, thanks for the prime, yep, I saw it, I'm pulling it up right now, um, here we go, go let's see uh i could literally just go to notifications here we go what's gonna happen everybody does it go core does it go core okay we're in the final month of the affliction league and you may be wondering what will happen when the league ends currently we don't have plans on making the affliction mechanic a part of the core game here's what you can expect when the league ends Oh, all your tinctures and charms will de be deleted. Existing itemized corpses and standard will not be deleted, nor are any specters from these corpses. However, these itemized corpses won't be obtainable in the next league. Oh no, Dream Core on Suicide Watch. Oh, can we get an F in the chat for Affliction? Oh, your Wildwood Ascendancies will no longer exist. Oh. Oh, oh no, rest in peace. Uh, existing Wildwood rucksacks will become remove only inventories with items in which only removable towns. Oh God, they're gone. All affliction exclusive uniques will be added to the core drop pool, except for that which was taken. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, well that is unfortunate. That, that is, that is key though. All the uniques will be in the core drop pool except for that which was taken. My money, and you're gonna see it in tomorrow's video, everybody. That which was taken will be on the boss for Affliction, and that boss will be added to Ritual. 100%. Yep. Okay, so how do we, how do we wanna respond to this? Um, my Twitch chat is in ambles. Rip affliction, uh, but that which was taken might be in a special boss table. Yeah, maybe, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. What are what are people thinking about? Limited supply specters. Yep, those prices are probably going up pretty crazily. Mhm. Mm people are sad. Okay. All right, well, we could have saw this coming, everybody. We could have saw this coming. Truly. That which was taken away. Beautiful. Yeah, Iliac 1986. Stop the borrowed power leagues. That's a hot take there, man. I don't know. Are they ever going to stop the borrowed power leagues? Uh, I also want to ask about that in the PV2 interview. Are they going to focus on that with PV2? Lots of borrowed power? Or are they actually going to be building up content again? You know they might be doing the borrowed power leagues, you guys, because many people have complained about the bulk of rewards and complexity of content. So now they're saying, all right, here's Crucible. It's super complicated, especially the smashing together items. But after this league, it's gone. Oh, here are tattoos. They're awesome, amazing, and Trial of the Ancestors. But after this league... They're gone. Here are charms and the Wildwood Ascendancies and that which was taken. And these are all incredible and people really enjoy them. But they are gone after this league. That might be happening more and more often. Or it just might just keep happening, you guys. Neutra 59. Yep, that's probably GGG stance. What you said right there. Borrowed power is better than power creep every league. Uh, at Talkative Try, you saw the quality of life changes they announced on their Discord. Were there more quality of life changes? In addition to the 
ones they already announced on Twitter or X? Are there more? Oh, Breach Hands? Yeah, I saw the Breach Hands. Yeah, I'm guessing that that means Splinters will also drop at the end. What do you guys think about that? That's my guess. Because we weren't seeing Breach Hands drops. Now they could have just had everything not showing upon drop, but who knows? Just that alone, not having to click those, that's actually kind of nice for Breach Enjoyers. Zach Nick FM, do you just run the breach maps and everything, or do you actually do the breach stones? Like breach and maps, that's what I meant. Okay. We have had zero dropped frames so far, everybody, which is a big win versus last stream, because last stream, I kid you not, 17% of our frames were dropped. 17%. That's a small indie beginning streamer. <laughs> Nathan Fee, good to hear, man. What brought you to Trial of the Ancestors? Did you see the PUE2 announcement and it got you hooked in? Okay. I think we've got everything established. Oh my God, we're already 25 minutes in. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay. Audio is good too. Perfect. I made a lot of adjustments, you guys. I'm glad to hear that uh, it seems to be working out. Okay. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Zach Nick FM. I've seen. So he asked, uh, Did you see Dragon's Dogma 2? I saw all the crazy characters you could make with Dragon's Dogma. I have not played it at all, I haven't touched it. Nathan Fee, see? Yep, you found PoE because Diablo 4, no joke. That's a lot of people, dude. It's a lot of people. I, I made the, the play on by 3 they come right before Diablo 4 came out and essentially said, by thousands they'll come to PoE after Diablo 4, and I'm pretty sure that was right. Hmm. Mako and Mocha, I would like you to ask them if they're going to do more community stuff like Build of the Week and new stuff like that in PoE 2. I, I do kind of want to touch on racing and stuff like that, but I'm sure that's not top of mind right now for them. They probably want to get the game out first, and then they'll start focusing on the community aspect of it. I think the next 6 to 12 months is just going to be content pump, and then after then, they'll actually start interacting with the community a lot more. Mm, okay. So, let's swap on over... Do I'll do small self, self big. Let's see. Let's see how I am in here. Yeah, that's good. That's bad. Oh, oh, no, no, no. You're seeing my script for tomorrow's video. You can't see that. No, 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 no. No, you weren't supposed to see that. Okay. Uh, the questions for the Jonathan interview, everyone. Um, let's see what you guys can see on your screen. I know I just probably blasted all of you with uh, the white, uh, and you can just see columns D and E, which is the question and predicted answer. Um, Muzz, do you know who all from GGG is going to be at this event plus PAX? No, I do not. Oh, I only know that Jonathan will be there. That's about it. Um, Javier asks, will you be able to show your recordings of gameplay from this next weekend about PV2 before they release the next league and trailer of PV2, or you have to wait? I have to wait. I have to wait until they've done their reveal. But like I said, I get to start from the very beginning of PW2 and go at my own pace for, they said, a few hours. So this will probably be the longest single play session any person has had for all the people going. Uh, yes, I will update the questions after the meetup, most likely. I'm going to keep probably maybe seven, essentially. And then if any of them are answered during the meetup, I'm going to get rid of them entirely. Yeah, so uh, I would like to just go through the current questions and uh, get a yay or nay in the chat if people think they're bad. Tell me if you think they're bad, because I really, really want to make sure that the community wants to ask these questions. I want to ask these questions, and I want to make sure that Jonathan will actually answer said questions as well. So 
We're going to start with question number one. It's about marketing, and that's the business that I'm in. Uh, I'll do summaries of these. Essentially, I'm wondering, they never do any paid ads ever for PoE. I see paid ads for Diablo. I see paid ads for Last Epoch. I see paid ads for Torchlight Infinite. I've never seen a paid ad for Path of Exile. The only paid ads I see are sponsored streams on Twitch. That's it. You know, like Asmongold did a sponsored stream once. I've seen other uh, bigger creators in other spheres like World of Warcraft had sponsored streams, but I've never actually seen any ad. So I'm kind of curious how intentional, obviously it's intentional, but why do they do this? Do they not want to draw in the wrong audience? Ooh, oh, Preet, you've seen Twitch ads for Affliction League? No way. Oh, uh, well, you know, he might, he might poo on me. He, he might poo on me. You've seen Twitch ads for PoE. I've never seen any ad for PoE. Yeah, the, the, the thing is, I'm just really curious because obviously Blizzard's marketing campaign for Diablo 4 was huge. They had billboards. They had the Wendy's stuff, the, uh, what was it, Kentucky Fried Chicken, all these different collabs. Big marketing budget. I know how much that costs, truly, and it's substantial. Oh, Preet, okay. So they actually may have had some Twitch ads. Okay, well, maybe uh, let's uh, let's highlight this one. I'm I, I really wanted to ask it, but uh, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a yellow. Hey, what was that, fellow exile? Oh, I'm gonna put you down here. I am still learning this streaming thing, everybody. So the alert is now down here. Uh, this needs to be shrunk a little bit, I think. Maybe this goes down here. Oh, no, we don't want to do that, people. This goes here. Oh, I need the alert. The alert goes up there. And the chat will go on my chest. Hey, Alpha Star, how you doing? Tell them Moana. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. So, here we go. Uh, question two. Plenty is changing from Pee 1 to Pee 2 with the intention of it being far better than the latter. Or for the with the attention of Pee Wee Two being far better than the uh, former, is there anything from Pee Wee One you are just satisfied with and are simply implementing as in as is in Pee Wee Two? Hey, Nico Five Fourteen. So so this one, I really want to get into the mind of Jonathan. I want to know what he thinks is perfect in Pee Wee One, and they're just transferring to Pee Wee Two. I think it's maps. What do you guys think? Do you think this is a good question? Like, cause it's very open ended, and I just want to see what he likes about Pee Wee One. Because honestly, guys, in that preach interview, he was basically saying, "Really, Zach Nick FM? Which uh, which interview? I'm curious." I uh, I don't remember that being asked. Oh, yeah, 100% DP, DP. Your follow-ups will be worth a lot more than your questions. I honestly do not remember this being asked, but if it was asked, let me know. Uh, I'll look into it a little bit because I really want to hear Jonathan's answer, and I think it will be maps, and then I want to poke in on why it's maps and what they... what uh, They're just not changing anything with maps in PUE 1. They see that as the perfect formula. Oh, yeah. Hey, Sreynab. How you doing? So I'm I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna do green is good. Oh yeah, that so that's I'm not looking at favorite league or favorite thing. I want to know from a game design perspective what he thinks is excellent in Pee Wee One and they're putting in Pee Wee Two. That's all. Not his favorite. Something that's actually well done. Green goes core. Because uh, Rubisco, I think his favorite league is Delve. Lusterka, uh, you sound a little jaded. He'll say something about the economic cost of difficulty, as always. Uh, yes, I can zoom in a little bit. Uh, here we go. I'm just going to hide this for now. Uh, yeah, I'll hide that. And then I will squeeze. Squeeze a little bit more. 
There we go. That should be better. Okay. Interesting. We're fine. Dark mode doesn't work on uh on sheets. It seriously doesn't. I might just be dumb, guys, because I've tried to get dark mode working. Uh, because I have extensions. Dark reader's on. Right now. I don't think it works for Google Sheets. Yeah, it doesn't work. Even uh, even <laughs> Google specific extensions. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's sad. I should do this in Excel. I know. Desert Wonder, have a good stream, Mr. Try. Thank you for your service. Of course, Exile. Okay. So here's my little lore question. I really want to ask this. Hey, Dreamcore, what's going on, man? It's getting late where you are. It's getting late. Hey, Juice. Uh, so, my lore question, everyone. Every Path of Exile player knows two phrases by heart. You are captured, stupid beast. And even down to the very inflection, still sane? Exile? Uh, will Zana be making a return in PewE2 after her quick exit from PewE1 in any way, shape, or form? Just give us a little something. I just want to see if he'll budge a little bit, honestly. I don't expect much from this one, but I just want to, I want to ask it so badly just to see what he says. And then follow up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask about Einhar and if he's still in PewE2 because he was in that initial trailer for PewE2 following the exile. Yep, still saying exile. Yep. Dark reader works. Mine's fully black right now on sheets. So if I go to extension, dark reader. Uh, oh my god. Oh, wait, did I just have it off, guys? Am I just dumb? Yo, I saved all of your eyes. <laughs> oh no. The technology is indeed here, everyone. Okay. Thanks, everyone. My face is huge. I mean, should I get far back like this? My face isn't that big. Ooh. Bystander 85. There is time travel element. Maybe Elva will fetch Zana from the past. Yeah, this world is an illusion exile. That's also an excellent one. Yeah, truly magic, you guys. Uh, I'm... Uh, I'm intent on this one. You guys can fight me about it later. Ooh. Ask about Kirax Vault. Is it still in the game? Does it make sense? Is he still in the game? I'm a doubt that Kirax still in the game. I mean, he might be an old man at this point. Okay. Next question, guys, that we have right now. Um, is cat form still planned for PoE2? As it was back at ExileCon 2019. So for those of you who aren't weren't around back then, they revealed werewolf, they revealed werebear, and were cat on the Beastmaster Ascendancy class for the Ranger back then. Now, we haven't heard anything about it, so I'm kind of curious. Is cat form still planned? I'm very curious about this one. In addition, I'm going to try to push him on other form teases like a Roa form or a caster-focused form, like a, a Lich or something, or a Were Owl, or something more unique to the world of Rayclast. Yeah, DDP-262, a Pangolin form. You know, so, something that's not standard in other games. A Weta form, there you go, Yurand, very good. Oh, Marion, if people, if uh, a studio approached them about a TV show in Rayclass, something like that, I'm sure they'd be down. Yeah, so I, I think this one's another uh, W question. Okay, this one, it's kind of, it's kind of iffy. So let me think what you think about this one. Ah, thanks for following, Solart. With 36 Ascendancy classes, I'm imagining design there must be a bit more niche than in Pee Wee 1. Uh, <laughs> A little bit more niche. Is that what is currently going on in the background? Or are ascendancies still being designed to be quite broad in terms of mechanics, abilities, and stats? So there's 19 ascendancy classes in PoE 1. There will be 36 in PoE 2. They're going to have to be pretty unique, right? Right? Like, of course, they're going to want you to be able to 
kind of a core set of builds and then a whole bunch of different things that they can't even predict. But how niche are they going? I'm really curious. I hope we see something about the Ascendancy classes this, uh, not this weekend, but next Monday. I really do. Somebody said I was ripped. Okay. I'm not ripped. I do work out, but I am not ripped. <laughs> uh, okay. Illustrica, yeah, did he he said they're gonna be kind of like Pee-wee one classes, uh sentences. Mm. So this is a big if. This is a big iffy one, I still think. This might be replaced. Yeah. Oh. Let's do going on here. There we go. Yeah. Magus DC, thanks for the prime, man. Hey Burn to Bear. How you doing? Javier, I, I notice you're not shouting out the Sanguinist. You're only shouting out the veteran from Silver. Now, uh, the Sanguinist won out. It was, it was really good, though. I really liked it. Diggly Flaps. Uh, no, I'm doing the interview live on Twitch. I'm just prepping right now. A hey, flaw dog. GG's indeed. Okay, next question. This is a big maybe again. All right, question seven or six, whatever. We've had a drip feed of confirmed league ports from Pee-wee 1 to Pee-wee 2, such as Delve, Delirium, Essences, and Bestiary. Do you have any others you could tease us a bit about to get all those, for example, talisman lovers excited? Eh? Eh? Yeah? What do you guys think? Will he spill the beans? This is really just a question to try to get him to spill. What else is coming to PoE2? Any other leagues? And maybe ask him a little bit about, uh, uh, as a follow-up, design changes between uh, PoE1 and PoE2 with the leagues. I really want to... He talked about how good Delve is and how they're porting it, essentially, to PoE2. But, like, what differences will there be? Will there be, like, more biomes and stuff? Will it be a full-fledged game form where they're going to be, like, three bosses? Or maybe they'll take a whole bunch of PoE1 bosses and just shoot them into Delve. And, you know, put Sulfite on them and put Azurite on them. And, oh, now we have a full set of, like, 15 Delve bosses. Ah, uh, Javier, no, I'm just messing around, dude. I am rarely serious. I, I'm i not, I'd never attack people. Uh, good question. Alester Ka, we saw Einhar in the first PoE 1 trailer. For first PoE 2 trailer uh, with the Exile. Like, uh, following him, just as he does in PoE 1. So, you know, that's what I'm taking as confirmed. Of course, so much has changed. But how... Do you really think they could remove Meinhar? Really, man? No way. Uh, Parzival's TV. Ask about Peewee Mobile as well. I want to keep it focused on Peewee 2. They explicitly said that they're going to focus on Peewee 2. Um, and once they launch it, then they'll focus on Peewee Mobile. So I don't think there's going to be a lot of... Uh, a lot of information on that. Right, Alester Ka, that's the thing. So I don't know if it's exactly confirmed, and maybe that'll uh, stick out to him. Maybe he'll be like, oh, wait, we didn't confirm best here. Muzz, yes, the 100 new bosses are expected to be map bosses like they are in Pee-wee 1. That is correct. I have a question about them in a little bit. Uh, uh, uh. Six Pier YT uh, makes a very good point. Can you make sure you're not over-preparing with too many questions? With limited time, like 10 in-depth questions exhaust the interview. I mean, preparing more is good when we don't know all the news, but maybe rank and be sure to uh, ask the important ones first as to not regret them by the two-hour mark. Bro, step ahead. I will be ranking them. I'll be ordering them. I've got the community hunger rating. I know you don't see this. Community hunger. I'm going to be ranking them, everything. Honestly, the reason I'm over-preparing is because I'm, uh, 
I won't lie, I'm just like a little, little nervous uh, about it and I've never done anything like it before and I want to make sure I have all the information at hand. And I know it's probably going to be an in-depth discussion and we're probably only going to get through, you know, you think 10 or 15, but I've done recaps of every single interview and we actually usually have on average about 28 questions per interview that are asked. So that's why I'm going for a good 30, 35 to make sure we have quite the buffer. Um, but if we end up going in depth on a lot of these questions and really going back and forth, which is what I want, I want it to be a conversation where he's talking most of the time and I'm really just poking and prodding, uh, then that's going to be fine too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh... Yeah, I want to make sure all these questions are new. Ooh, the div card problem. Should I poke on that? That's a curious one. That's a curious one. Uh, Dorbus, yeah, it's, slash, it's an exclamation point question, I believe. Or is it questions? Crap, I don't know. Uh-oh, my bad if it's a little wrong. Okay, uh, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna ask this one, you guys. I don't see a lot of pushback. Okay, here we go. The topic of the day. If anyone has not seen my my video today, go watch it. Go watch it. Help help me in the algorithm. Leave a comment, like the video, share it with your friends, everything. Please, please, please. Trying to grow that YouTube channel. <laughs> Campaign replayability is a hot topic in the ARPG community. I know you have a firm stance on not being able to skip the campaign, one I agree with, but are the changes discussed during ExileCon 2019 to vary up every character's campaign playthrough still planned. For example, unique world maps, different quests to choose, etc. Essentially having variable playthroughs every single time. That's what I'm going to really prod on because I know they're not going to let people skip the campaign. Will they encourage variability more and more compared to PoE 1? Mm-mm. What do you guys think about this one? People talked a lot about it in uh, on YouTube today. I really want to see if Jonathan is uh if they're still planning on this because it was a big thing in 2019. You know, completely different world maps, different quests you have to do, different bosses you have to kill for the stat increases, all that stuff. Are they really trying to bury it up? Because that will help with the campaign. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, Lester Cott, I've been seeing a lot of people say that. I just might be wrong. I just might be wrong on that. So vary up every character's. Um, so how about vary up every league's campaign playthrough? Be different? Aro Aris, I don't have any questions about Spirit yet. That's something I might get to experience in the flesh. So that might be one of the questions that uh, spur up from the actual gameplay. Um, so that's a, that's a W question. Yep. Cyber, I would guess world gen is shared in terms of the actual world map. Um, of course, not like league mechanics and stuff, but the world map, heck yeah. Bystander 85, yeah, so that's that's what I'll probably follow up on that question with. I actually have it right here. You guys don't see it. Would you ever consider a partial campaign skip like last Epoch's dungeon key system? So that's my follow up there. I'll definitely touch on that. Yeah, you guys can't see all the columns because it'll be too zoomed out, you know. Okay, okay, so we got another another W. Okay, here's one, another from me, you guys. End game question. Dota 2 is credited with implementing the first battle pass in games, but I'd argue Path of Exile implemented a far cooler and more consistent one as early as Anarchy and Onslaught League in June 2013. Will PoE 2 keep the current Challenge League structure with free cosmetic rewards and trophies for those who play and complete challenges in the game?
AB, I would like you to ask, are they adding a completely new slash unique drops we have never seen in any ARPG at the start of the release in beta? AB, do you mean like new unique items? Like crazy unique items? Because yeah, I, I believe that's the case. Every single base type of Pee-wee 2 will have a unique item. Coombs, you thought which was next? Yeah, I did too. Uh, looks like they changed that a little bit. Just a little bit. It's Ranger. AB, what do you mean? Uh, new drops? So uh, can you elaborate on that? Never seen before, like, so like item types? Kind of? Like something innovative in the genre itself, like a new, a new item you can equip on your character. Oh, Kane Marco, I don't know. I feel like the next PoE 1 League might be delayed a little bit, maybe into July. Yeah, Rubisco, the Compendium was the first battle pass. I bought that one too, in Dota 2. Yeah, flares are new, crossbows, they really new in ARPG. Yeah, like AB. I mean, come on, the, the crossbows? That whole system just seems wild. Even, even like the shape-shifting, you guys, I have to do a video where if I get my hands on the Druid and I get to do Werebear, hopefully I do, I'm going to do my gameplay in Last Epoch of the Werebear, my gameplay in Diablo 4 of the Werebear, early game, comparing an early game, and then my gameplay in Path of Exile 2 is the Werebear. Guys, it all just looks unique in ARPGs. Like, the weight of the Werebear slamming down like this. That bridge scene in the PUE 2 trip. Okay. Uh, you guys are going to see my YouTube homepage. Uh, let's check it out. Hopefully there's nothing bad here. I assume there's not going to be. Path of Exile 2 Trailer 3. Right here, hopefully the sound isn't terrible. We're gonna do a little bit of a watch. Let's see, yeah, okay, right here. So we're we're gonna go. Okay, hopefully it's not too bad. But this scene with the druid is when I knew I needed to play a druid instantly in Pee Wee Two. Look, look at this. Like, guys, come on, does that? Or does that not look just complete? How good does that look? I, I mean, I, can I do slow-mo? I can do slow-mo on this, right? I've never done slow-mo on YouTube. I can do, uh, can do uh, settings, playback speed, 0.25. Let's watch that at 0.25. Sounds horrible. Let's turn that off. Whoa. Look at that. Look at this. I mean, it just looks, it looks beautiful, you guys. That is what excited me about the Druid. That little scene right there. Um, it's just wonderful. I'll turn off the sound and I'll just let it go for a second. Asbin lost his mind when he saw the Druid. Yeah, I did too, dude. I've not played Monster Hunter, man. I've not yet. Okay. What's an Asmin? Asmin Gold. Yeah, I turned off the sound, you guys. Um, I guess I can turn it on a little bit. Is that okay? I don't want it to be too loud. But yeah, this I mean this trailer is what originally pumped me up. Extremely. Yeah, the druid animations were just insane, you guys. Let's see this. Merville as well. I'm just I can just do react stuff right now. Seriously. <laughs> also, I think that uh well I was going to say, I think this is the act 2 boss right here. I think the act 2 boss fight is going to be on the caravan and it's going to be this massive glob of gore. Right here. It's going to be the uh oh gosh, the seed of corruption. Yes, the cart full of squirm. You're going to have to trail down through the sandstorm and get back on here. And this is going to be the arena right here. And you're going to fight this massive beast. It's almost confirmed by myself. Oh, this moment in the trailer. Dun, dun. It's this beautiful. 
let's just let's just uh let's just let it go. Camille is Camille is the god. This world will be and then we've got Jesus right here. No matter the cost. Hey, score win. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that as well. Can we get a pause on that Atlas skill tree? Diggly flaps, it is literally just the Atlas passive skill tree from PoE1. Okay. Okay. I'm pretty sure. This skill tree? I mean, it looks beautiful. Yeah, the logo animation is wonderful. The sound design is excellent as well. Yeah, I mean, the skill tree looks really cool. I like all, like, the shapes. Look how complex this is. Look at all the flask stuff, you guys. Is this, like, uh, it's a whole bunch of flask, mana flask, health flask. This is Pathfinder, right? This is our Ranger. Ranger and Huntress is right here. I love the shape of everything. Of the clusters. Do we recognize all these keystones too, you geniuses out there? I uh I don't. Agogir Wales. Hey, thanks for the follow, Hyperman. Still got jewel Oh guys, I didn't notice. I don't remember if this was confirmed, but I just noticed jewel sockets in here for the first time. There's jewel sockets everywhere. No, there's no masteries on this on the tree. No masteries. They're gone. No life on the tree anywhere. I see power charges. Accuracy is still a thing, and we know they've revamped that in Pee-wee too. I see Avatar of Fire over there. Point blank shot. I wonder how many of these. I probably wouldn't be able to recognize many of these. We've got Elemental e Equilibrium. Look at that. Elemental Equilibrium is down here on the tree? That has to be a placeholder, right, guys? Val packed, bottom right. Yep, 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 yep. I guess I've never done this. Is that glancing blows right here? Uh huh. Area of effect, top left, mastery. Yeah. Wait. Elemental equilibrium is not currently here, Iliac. Right? Isn't it up here? It's uh, it's up there. Am I crazy? Yep. Mind over matter, top right. Yep. Wait, it's it's on the bottom right of the tree. Am I insane? What am I thinking of, you guys? Elemental. How boring and small. Hey, Giord, thanks for the prime, dude. I appreciate it. It's but elemental overload. Oh my god. Oh, please. Forgive me. Forgive me, please. Oh no. No, Dream Card, please don't shame me, bro. Don't shame me, dude. Oh, oh, please, no. Don't call me a fan. Come on, I am a real fan. Guys, no, please, no, 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 no. Yep, you're right. I'm only in it for the clicks, guys. It's true. Yep. I love Diablo 4. It's so much fun. Uh, okay, yeah, that was fun looking up that trailer. Oh, you guys get to see, uh, you know, uh, my daughter loves to watch Moana on my Talkative Try account. Hey, Dreamcore. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, totally. Uh, I'm going to make that mistake in the interview. I'll just start blurting out absolutely random, you know, uh, keystones to Jonathan. He'll be like, what the hell are you talking about, man? What's going on? Okay. Uh, did they move it a couple years ago? Is that why maybe I'm a little uh, little off on it? Okay, cool, cool. We're going to go back to here because uh, we're going to finish this up. Because after this, we're going to do a little bit of a react we're gonna do some reactions. We're gonna be a, we're gonna be like Asmongold, guys, but it's gonna be some actually good reactions, some reactions to quality content because uh, I have a video coming out tomorrow, and I'd like to see how my video compares to this other person's video. Uh, okay, uh, I think this is a W question as well. Also, guys, I'm gonna follow up. Ooh, ooh, no, 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 too green. I'm gonna follow up with this. 
people who have been playing PoE for a while will know this. Is the t-shirt reward possible for the first 50 or so people who complete the challenges in Pee Wee 2's first challenge leagues? So for those of you who don't know, in Anarchy and Onslaught and a few leagues after that, people were actually able to earn t-shirts if they were able to complete the challenges. I know Diggly Flaps is going to hate me. He's going to call me a lazy reactor too. He's not lazy. He, uh, he's a very hardworking streamer. Ha, 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 ha. AB says, try, please ask Jonathan that, please, if they will do a unique drop similar to the uniqueness of Divination card, something completely new. Would you consider Valdo's maps along those lines? Maps designed by supporters, something along those lines? It might be too big. You're right. I, I was thinking maybe for like a race, you know, how like Diablo did the whole... Oh, the first people to level 100 get their names carved on stone. Maybe they'll do the t-shirt thing. Okay, next question. Um, I, I have it marked as low priority. Um, it's people love their forms and some people might want to easily split Pee 1 from Pee 2. Will both games share a site or will they have a have separate websites and forms? Because right now, Pee Wee forums are actually pretty active, you guys. I'm wondering if they'll split them out because I can... I can see there being a growing animosity between the communities, and that's why I have a follow-up, and that's why I think the question might be worthwhile. Do you foresee an us versus them mentality spawning when Pee 2 hits? You know, Pee Wee 1 v Pee Wee 2 communities. Does grinding your games plan to address it in any way or leave it as a community matter? It's interesting to think about, guys, because like it or not, it's going to happen. Pee Wee 2 already has a separate website, yes, but will it have a separate form and everything? You know, will updates come out on a Pee Wee 2 website only? Will it have its own form? Will they be splitting out the communities essentially, kind of like how there's the Pee Wee 1 versus the Pee Wee 2 subreddit? Diggly Flaps, yeah, I, I know from the dev side he answered that. They're all working together. They're very wholesome. But the community... Probably not going to be as wholesome, unfortunately. <laughs> AB, like, okay, you like, like, the Void Divination card? Okay, yeah. So the, I'm seeing a lot of okay uh, with this one. Not a lot of strong reactions, so... We're going to highlight it orange. Chris Ellis is asking, uh, ask if they will implement an in-game build guide uh, to follow for new players that highlight suggested skills item passives similar to following a Dota 2 build guide. That is an interesting one. I know that they said that they probably don't want something like POB in there, but something more akin to a Dota 2 build guide, like recommendations or something, would kind of be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, a Triceratops pet would be very pog. I would love that. Right, two Loth, you're totally right. OSRS versus RuneScape 3, and that's what I'm that's what I'm getting at. Okay. All right, so let's move on to the next question. All right, Madbone has this question. I know he's not in the chat, but shout out to Madbone anyway. Bosses in Path of Exile 2, especially during the campaign, appear super involved and mechanically interesting. We know we will face them again during Pee 2's version of maps. Will they harness any increased difficulty beyond higher health, higher damage, such as new mechanics, new arenas, etc.? What do you guys think about that? Eh? Like, will a certain boss gain, like, two new abilities? Or will they have, I don't know, what, what else would they have, you guys? Think about it, because is it really just going to be higher health, higher damage? I like the question. I thought Madbone had a good question there. And I think this is something they can definitely address. New arenas, Illustricaz, like, yeah, obviously, yes. But it, in Illustricaz, so in Pee Wee 2, the arenas really do seem dependent on the boss, like, heavily involved. You know, like, of course, in Pee Wee 1, there's, like, uh, the Maven arena and the Cirrus arena, all that stuff. But uh, in, P in Pee Wee 1's map system and the campaign bosses, I mean... The arenas aren't, they don't matter a ton. And when they do, like Kataba, he's always having that arena. 
imagine Katava and somewhere else. I don't know, like where he can be in the center of the arena. Like I'm thinking, I'm thinking, oh, here we go. We're going back to ExileCon, guys. We're going back to ExileCon. Imagine fighting. Oh, yeah, I'm sharing my screen. Uh, right here. Uh, imagine fighting, let's say, let's say this girl, the Bone Witch, okay? Right? The Bone Witch, remember? She basically makes a maze. Imagine fighting her in this place. Huh? Super tightly enclosed area. She creates massive flame floors, all that stuff. Like, that is a substantially different arena, and that matters. No, Lonely Neat BF. About the endgame bosses appearing as campaign bosses. My friend was worried we'd be fighting the same six or so bosses across 100 maps. Is that true? No, this isn't Diablo 4. No, 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 no. They're having 100 bosses at the very least to start. No. No. Not Diablo 4. And we're not going to have 15 bosses. 100 plus. Tomb Lord login. You know, the classic Asmongold. I mean... That's that's the boss fight in uh, Diablo 4. Hey, Trife, what's going on, man? Yeah, I bet so lonely neat. Yeah, okay. So this sounds like a W question. Good job, Madbone. Okay. Enigmatic, and I kind of wanted to save this for the last part of the interview. Okay? And it's I think it's an interesting question. And, of course... They could just say yes to it, and then it could be a lie. But I'm still curious about it. We know an absolute ton about Path of Exile 2, and we'll be learning more in the coming months. Are you going to save anything substantial to simply surprise players? So I'm thinking, like, are they not going to show the whole passive tree? Are we not going to see some of the Ascendancy classes? Of course, we're not going to probably see the Act bosses, and if he gives that answer, I'm going to be like, ah, oh, well, any, like, uh, build-defining things, like, be a weapon. Like, are you saving anything in your back pocket? I think that's a good final question to end the interview on. Hey, Alpha Star, thanks for complimenting the stream. Thank you. I hope it's going well. We still have had zero frames dropped. We were at 17% frames dropped last stream. So, optimizations were successful. Nico514, make sure to ask if they thought of having the dialogue continue playing while you walk, including load screens and changing zones. Don't know if you covered this. I wanted to mention this uh, yesterday during when I was recapping the preach interview. Of course, they should do this more. They do this with some things and they don't do it with others. Just have it, have it like a tick option or something. Like say, you can go to settings and say, keep playing dialogue when transferring area or walking away from NPC, something like that. You think this will get dodged? Okay, Stubbs. See, and I don't want any dodging questions. That's the thing. Bystander85. Oh, 100%. I have, uh, I, I'm going to keep them pretty broad. I'm probably going to cut all these down to be like one sentence. And, uh, and I'll have all of my extra stuff in the follow-ups. 100%. Ethereal. If you've played Last Epoch, they have a damage reduction mechanic for bosses if a character does too much damage too fast. I wonder if PoE have anything in mind to prevent stacking damage to kill bosses as fast as possible. Yunes, 6147, thanks for the prime, dude. Uh, PoE does have this currently. Don't, don't we have that with our bosses? They have kind of like a 90% damage reduction in the first five seconds. Is it more substantial? In uh, Last Epoch, I have played Last Epoch. I guess I just didn't notice that my my uh, character's just not strong. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna mark this as a W. Good job, Enigmatic. 
Okay, here are a bunch of user questions, you guys. For now, we're going to go through these, and then I'm probably going to try some... Uh... Hey, Gear Sick! Dude, thanks for the Prime, man. Uh, and then I'm going to try some uh, some PoE, I think. Make sure it all works well there. Make sure we're ready for everything else. Yeah. Bystander85. I think that's a good alternate way to say the question. I like that. Okay. End game. Can we look forward to meeting our past foes from PeeWee1's end game and PeeWee2's end game? Historic bosses like the Shaper, the Maven, and the Searing Exarch. Very curious about this one. Maybe they can even just repurpose them in uh, in transferred over league content or have... It would be really cool to have a a synthesis style mechanic as an end game system. It's not maps. So you've got maps, you've got delve, you've got heist, you have expedition, stuff like that. And then you have synthesis and synthesis could be like progressing through PUE one's end game, like starting, you know, at the little Island with uh, the shaper and then moving your way to Cirrus. And then you go to the Maven and then the Searing Exarch and the eater of worlds. I think that'd be so cool as a, Synthesis style mechanic where you're going into the memories of PoE one and PoE two. I would love it. What was that? Blue Yed, I am yes, I am guaranteed an interview after the event. I have a one on one that's about two hours with Jonathan after the event on the twenty fifth. AB, you think you guys think this is a given? By the muscular golden art of innocence. What was that? Okay. I love Cirrus 2 Rubisco. By the muscular golden art of innocence. What was not a fan, not a fan. Yep. Ne uh, mid response. So I'm going to go ahead and give it the mid mark. Okay. All right, this is from Scorewin. Now, this is something that a lot of people assume as being in the game, but it's not confirmed. So it should be a quick answer, hopefully. Will instant buyout trading still work when the seller is offline, or will they need to be online for the item to appear listed and for the trade to go through? This is vital for this auction house thing to work, right? A lot of people assume this is the case. It was not ever confirmed with Zizarin or in any other subsequent interviews. So good, good question, score win. And I think this would be hopefully a quickie, right? To just confirm it and to assuage people's worries. Oh, Ethereal. Easter eggs from Pee Wee 1 and Pee Wee 2, 100% happening. Nikhiliath, love your content and energy, mate. Keep it up. I will, dude. I will, dude. <laughs> What's this? A real hey, Max C. Bowman. Thank you so much for subbing, dude. I'm going to be streaming a lot. Keeping it consistent. Should be entertaining. We'll get some gameplay in here, too. Right now, it's a lot of talking directly to you guys. Thanks, man. <laughs> Fondue. I think there will be secret vendor recipes. Mako and Mocha, I'm not going to ask about uh, fishing. I mean, maybe I could. But what Jonathan's going to say is, there's fishing in PUE 1? That's probably going to be... The real question is, we have Chris... Or what is it? Krilson in PUE 1. Are we going to have, like, uh, what? Drogers in PUE 2 or something? Drogers? Is that a good one? I don't know. Jongers, Jongers, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, this is the W though. Good reception here. Jolson, ah, yes, yes, yes. Yes, yeah. We've got an Omega Cybers question, all right? I like this question, Joggers, very good. I know we've not officially seen the Marauder of Pee Wee 2 in action, but I'm still curious if you could touch on what the thematic differences between the Marauder and the Warrior in Pee Wee 2 might be. All other class pairs are distinct besides this one. Now, I think it might literally just be Marauder Barbarian, Fighter Warrior. It might be like that. What do you guys think? 
I see a W from Tay Stubbs. Goober George, somebody asked about the P uh, PvP system. It's not being expanded to start. Nope. Rainbow wants to wait for the reveal for that. I mean, but he might give us exclusive information if we try to, you know, pry a little bit of knowledge from him, Rainbow. Petite fill out. How long is GGG planning to keep Pee-wee 1 and Pee-wee 2 before switching completely to Pee-wee 2? They said a decade. They said as long as people play it. So not in the foreseeable future are they just going to cut Pee-wee 1. Ooh, I think Warrior equals two-hander. Marauder equals dual wielding from Rubisco. Hmm. Maybe. Yeah, because we haven't seen any real dual wielding yet. In the trailer, again... Let's do a little switcheroo here, everybody. Uh, da, 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 da. Here. Let's go to each of them. Me. Yeah. Witch, right? We understand summoner, ranger, bow, yep. Duelist, sword, the shadow, dual wielding, templar flail, and the marauder, dual wielding axes. Dual wielding axes, guys. Throwing axes, too. Warrior two-handed. You might be onto something. Very possible. Hey, cute dog. Nice to see you here, dude. How you doing? Is that the cute dog? The one who I uh, made a pop-off video of somebody getting, uh, what was it? Was it eight mirrors, cute dog, dude? <laughs> All right. So. I think this is another. It sounds like it's a W from you guys. W? Uh, no, Rainbow. It's going to be six hacks. They changed it from seven to six. Oh yeah, Scorewin. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys what I had for the scene for the interview because I want to make sure it looks beautiful. I thought that's one thing that Preach did excellently. The interview layout was it was crisp. Okay, so uh, we have two more that we're gonna touch on, and then we're gonna do that nice react, everybody. Big reactions. Trade spamming currency orbs should no longer be possible or truly the meta in Pee-wee 2. Does this mean basic items like chaos orbs will be rarer and far more valuable, or should we expect similar drop rates compared to Pee-wee 1 for these basic currencies? Hey Karkamas, how you doing? What do you guys think about that one? Good question. Good question. I mean, it's almost implicit, right? It's almost implied, but I, I feel like this could get him into a little bit of a discussion on crafting. Because it's something we haven't necessarily seen. A luster cow with the L. The L for this quest. You think it's, to, do you think it's basically just confirmed? Really, AB? AB says, I asked Chris something similar during GamesCon, and he said there wouldn't be a difference except adding gold. And gold will use inventory space. Ooh. I wonder. See, so I'm curious if they changed their mind on it. I'm just a little, little curious on it. We're talking balance. It's not the time. That's a good point from Illustrica. I think that's a good point. This isn't really a design thing. Because we know that they don't want us spamming stuff, right? I, I I think you're right. I saw something somewhere that I thought was interesting. Let's see. Oh, Jekko, Jekko 3. What do you mean by spamming currency? I play Ruthless only. Uh, if you want to try to get a specific set of modifiers on a base, you reasonably could spam 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 alteration orbs on a single item. I, I've done it. I did it this league. Or... Uh, Fizz, is, fizz, uh, fizz damage on my beautiful psychotic axe. I think I spent 2,800. And you just click. You don't stop clicking. You just click, 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 click.
the pun slinger. Is this a question for me or Jonathan? Is there a change in PeeWee 2 over PeeWee that you love, but think some players will hate? Yeah, the 100 to 0 for bosses. I think a lot of players are going to hate that. I love it. Has Ruthless been confirmed for PeeWee 2? No, it has not. Terry Three Toes, ask him if console finally going to get zoom mechanics. What do you mean by zoom? Oh, like uh, like zooming in on your character? You don't have that? KCD21, you like Wells. What? What? Maybe we'll all love Wells. Maybe we're just not Terry Three Toes. Okay, that's it. Maybe, I'll, uh, maybe not the interview, but I think I might. Uh, a lot of these questions too, guys, like the simple ones, I'm going to get to talk to them. So uh, like in person. So I might be able to ask them then. Oh, I need to swap to this one. There we go. Um, there we go. Great. By the muscular golden art of innocence. What was that? <laughs> okay, cool. One more. Then we're going to do that cool react. All right, we know PeeWee 2's endgame is based on maps and you've done a great job with them in PeeWee 1. Are there any specific pain points you've noticed or are looking to alleviate when it comes to maps in PeeWee 2? Now, I want to include this if we get a glimpse at endgame during the exile meet, but if we don't, then I don't know if I want to include it. What do you guys think? Yay or nay? W from Bystander. Okay. Big W. Iliac 1986. Yeah, right. I'm on I'm on you with sexted scarab management. Respect broccoli, they said explicitly that PUE2 will endgame will be maps. They said it in the preach interview, they said it in Ziz's. Um, they said it on this a beautiful website. Here. Look at this. Explore a new end game. At the conclusion of Path of Exile 2's six act campaign, you'll gain access to its end game. Each of the more than a hundred end game maps has its own boss fight and modifiers that enable revamped reversions of many of Path of Exile's past leagues. We'll reveal more details of the surprises that await you in Path of Exile 2's end game in the lead up to release. Yes. Maps will be in PUE2. Sorry, respect broccoli. I know I'm I'm trying to find the best spots. Tempest Mind, they did confirm boss life resets on player death. Yeah, Pierce, all the leagues are going to be revamped and changed up, essentially. I don't think they're porting anything one to one. That's correct. Jekko Jekko, that's interesting. That's interesting. Uh, modifier, modifiers then enable revamped leagues. Sounds like we roll for league mechanics now. Oh my god, no. Oh, imagine we have to roll the mechanics on our maps or something like that. Like the damage mods, they're gone. All that stuff's gone. You just like roll mechanics on your maps. I, I don't know. I don't know. Oh god. Yeah, that sounds very chore heavy. That that sounds like it might be a little bit. Was part of the question about positive only mods? Hmm. Right. Yeah, let's only roll beyond, guys. Okay. So I expect this to be uh, scarabs and sextants and everything if those are still in PeeWee 2. So I'm going to count it as a W. So it looks like of our 16 questions, we have one, two, three, four, five that may not be worthy. So we have 11, uh, which leaves us with a lot of wiggle room uh, for the exile meets and everything. Because that's the next time we're going to come to this list. We're not going to touch it the next stream. And I won't be streaming again until I get back from the exile meet after Saturday's stream. Okay. But well, just a moment.
everyone we're going to change gears for a second now so this is uh it's time to do a little bit of a react oh trife a little bit off topic uh but who finally won the ascendancy duel i did 60 40. i get to lose i get to choose silver's league starter bystander 85 yes discord is the best place um are we getting a bug with nightbot it's not letting uh you guys see Exclamation point question is not working or questions. Let me see. Let's see. If it's not working, I'm sorry, guys. I will post. Nightbot should post the Discord in a little bit. I'll I'll look into it and see what's going on with the issue. Or I can just uh I kind of have saved it. I think we set it up quite a while ago. Um I'll just copy paste a link into the chat, you guys. Um, so let me get an invite link. Uh, invite people. Oh, well, Nightbot just... Oh, it's Discord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder what uh, the questions command is doing. It doesn't look like it's working. Rampage. Am I going to ask them about campaign skipping? I am in a form. Yes. That's one of the questions we went over earlier. Okay, everybody. So... Little sneak peek for those of you who do enjoy my YouTube content and like my videos. Tomorrow's video is going to be called Five Buff, Five Nerf, PoE 3.24 Necropolis Theories. So, yes, 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 yes. We will be predicting what will be buffed and nerfed in Necropolis. I'm not going to reveal it now, but friend of the channel and friend of the community, Dreamcore, released his prediction video yesterday i think and it's it's popped off it's done pretty darn well i think it's at like fifteen thousand views i have not watched it yet though so we are going to together if uh you would like to take a look at this video watch it see what his predictions are and then we can see what the heck happened uh with my predictions and how they compared to his i'm kind of curious to see what it's going to look like so let me get dreamcore's channel up right here and you guys let me know if the audio is going to be all good Gotta skip the commercial, of course. Sorry, Dreamcore. I'm so sorry, dude. No extra ad revenue for you. All right. We are gonna watch this pretty quick and just check it out, you guys. I, I'm, I'm just curious to see what it's like. Seriously. So, let's see. I'm gonna chill a little bit. We'll stop and uh, rag on Dreamcore. Just kidding, Dreamcore's great. Let me know if the volume is bad, you guys. <clears throat> Thanks, AB. Yeah, I'm pretty chill on streams. I try to be extremely professional in my videos. All right. Ensuring our descendants have the means to return to greatness. Let me know if the audio is bad. Hello, guys, and welcome to another video. The Necropolis content reveal is just over a week away, and so I thought it'd be fun to dive into some predictions for the buffs and nerfs that we're likely to see in patch 3.24. So let's get straight into it, beginning with the nerfs. And number one on the nerf list, which should be number one on everybody's... Oh my god, uh, people in the chat were already spamming it. <laughs> Penance brand of dissipation! Interesting, interesting. Okay, so Earth list is penance Everybody brand knew it. Of dissipation, of course, which is the most overtuned and broken skill that's been in the game for a long time. Now, this skill, like many of the new transfigured gems, were probably not tested thoroughly before getting added to the game, and it's just completely overtuned. It does way too much damage. And I think this one won't just get a normal nerf. It will get a classic GGG triple nerf. It's the triple tap is happening. Now, if this was Diablo 4 or Last Epoch, this would have already been nerfed, you guys. Probably going to get its base damage nerfed, the car speed nerfed, and then the more damage multiplier will probably be nerfed as well. And to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised to see this skill dealing 70 or 80% less damage in... Ooh, dead skill. I... I didn't play any Penance Brand, but I saw some of the footage of it downing bosses in, you know, less than a second. So, totally understand that. The next patch, this one is going to get absolutely gutted. 
And number two on the predictions for nerfs is Detonate Dead. Not that one, though. No, nope. hey. I don't think Player Detonate Dead is going to be nerfed. I think Monster Detonate Dead is going to be nerfed. Oh, the Quinn clip. In the Affliction League, we saw the Quinn some clip. pretty unfortunate player deaths. I know that Quinn69 had two deaths in the Wildwood mechanic, both to detonate dead or some kind. I love Quinn clips, you guys. I, I watch every single one. His uber boss fighting clips were just phenomenal. I mean, the dude's entertaining. I don't know what you guys think about him, but you can't deny that this guy is hella entertaining. I mean, look at that face. Look at that beautiful face. <laughs> kind of corpse explosion mechanic. And to be honest, this league was kind of plagued with those kind of deaths with lots and lots of rip clips of similar types. But this is just one league in many. And Detonate oh, we're getting Dead another one. has been a problem for a very long time. But this is a bit less of a prediction and a bit more of a spoiler because we actually had the Tavern Talk podcast <sighs> back at the start of January. And in that podcast, oh, this one was horrible. Darth Microtransactions actually asked a question revolving around player deaths that are unrecognizable. And he was referring to a recent death that he had had to Detonate Dead and the fact that Detonate Dead is often very dangerous and not very visible. And Jonathan and Mark had this to say. So there are a couple of things there I will say in particular. One is that, just, just to be completely clear about this, the way Detonate Dead is in POE 1 isn't good. And Mark has a specific plan. I think he's even going to change it in POE 1 before too long, which I don't know if you... Okay, question on this, you guys, and maybe Dream Crawl will bring this up. Why in the world is it changing now? What's going on? Like, uh, it, it's been like this since I started playing. Detonate Dead has been plaguing people all the way since Kriparian died when she corpse exploded the corpse of the boss, right? What's going on? We New change of leadership, Chris. Chris, were you a fan of the detonate dead deaths? It's very possible, Chris. It's very possible. He might have been a big fan of those deaths. Could be it. You were happy to talk about. Uh, yeah, I mean, ultimately, <laughs> uh, you got two corpses on the ground. And they look like they're just a, two different bodies. And you don't know the life of those bodies on the ground, especially with the current just you know, AOEing things down. Um, and it is always bad for something like one of those things might deal a million damage and the other might deal a hundred damage and you don't know. And so the problem with Dead Nate Dead right now is yes, you cannot, I mean, aside from the fact a million damage is probably unacceptable outside of the context of some bosses. <laughs> um, you can't tell which of those is going to deal more damage. So we need to make sure that uh, Dead Nate Dead, and I, I've, I've spoken to other designers about this and there are the, the tasks have been made to change this <laughs> um there is a the jira tickets are in they're ready the jira tickets are in you know we're ready to fix detonate dead finally we're going in we're fixing it clear difference in telegraphing or at least danger like you can see this thing is going to do a lot of damage and this thing is going to do a small amount of damage before that damage is dealt whereas right now both look identical so if you take like Alera's DD, for example, or like Malagero's, um, you've just got the exact same telegraphing on every corpse and the exact same timing on every corpse. And yet one of those corpses might deal a hundred times the damage of another. And you just don't know. So you were saying about having like red flashes was like beep, 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 getting stronger and stronger. And then yeah. the amount of time that it takes is longer when the corpse has more life. So you've got more time to get out of the way, the larger the corpse is. So you kind of get this like the telegraph actually changes based on the, on the, on the, on the amount of life in the corpse. Yeah, um, and that way, uh, did they did will be more visibly easier to understand. Will be able to you'll be able to dodge it when it matters and this kind of stuff. You should see it and go. That will kill me, and that yeah. will not probably won't kill me. Man, I don't know. I don't know if this is gonna work out. We'll have to see it. They better release a teaser with new detonate dead. That would be the probably one of the Path of Exile Twitter accounts most successful tweets. If they posted Mark Roberts explaining how the new detonate dead worked. Oh, I think that would be absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, that was a pretty long clip. <laughs> so based on this information, I think that Monster Detonate Dead is going to be nerfed. Whether it gets nerfed in 3.24 or not, we'll have to wait and see. But I do think that's going to be a high priority on the list of things to be changed. So I definitely expect to see it in this pack. Looks like you won something. Oh, no YouTube Prime. Look at me. Look at me. 
much. Yep. Sorry, Drinkware. And number three on the list of nerfs is Defiance of Destiny and Radakesh's Impatience. Ooh, Those two uniques ooh. are very, very strong, and they got used a ton in this league by lots of... Really? Interesting. Detonate, uh, Defiance of Destiny and Relicashes, he thinks those will be nerfed? I don't know. Uh, nerfed how? Like, are they going to be... I've, I, sh I know, I should watch it. Is he going to nerf it by making it tier 0? Because they're tier 1 right now. R Rarity nerf, yeah. Right, move to tier 0. I think that's what it's going to be it. Let's see what Dreamcore says. And lots of builds. But I don't think they're going to be nerfed mechanically. I don't think we're going to see any kind of tweaks to the numbers on those items. I actually think both of them are going to be moved from the tier 1 rarity to tier 0 unique rarity. And that means they're going to be... Gotta just let them talk. No, I feel like I have some gold right now. You know, I did not free watch this. A lot less common and a lot more expensive in trade league. And I think that makes sense. I'm not really sure why Defiance of Destiny made it into tier 1 rather than tier 0 to begin with. But don't expect to see this in the patch notes. That will be something that will have to be discovered by the players into the next league. Now let's move on to the buff right, predictions. The buffs, beginning here we go. with Ascendancy reworks. Surely Gladiator is going to be reworked. All right. Dream Core has been on copium. Opium. For this since I first met him and talked to him back in the last year. There's absolutely no way this is going to happen. Dreamcore man, I'm so sorry, but they are leaving Gladiator exactly where it is. Nothing is happening. No, Gladiator's not changing. Nothing's happening. I don't even know if there will be any Ascendancy reworks. There might be some nerfs, but I don't know if there will be reworks. Uh, Jekko Jekko, Gladiator should be the dual wielding class. Oh, yeah, you better watch my video tomorrow. I may mention something about this. Worked in this patch. I have said this before. I could also see Assassin, Raider, or Berserker getting a rework as well. Those are the... Don't. Don't touch my Berserker. Berserker's the best. What are you talking about, Dreamcore? Leave it alone. It's the best. It's my favorite Ascendancy. Leave it. Hey, Dreamcore's in the chat. Hey, Dreamcore. I mean, you could be right this time. We've been talking about the Gladiator getting buffed for a while now. Classes that are most in need of reworks. But I'm a little bit unsure on this one, I have to say, because we had two Ascendancy reworks in Crucible, and then we had the information come out from Chris Wilson during the Q&A from Crucible that they had actually been working on many Ascendancy reworks in the background, and they had done a bunch of them. I love it. Look at this. Look at the tag right here, you guys. The little card, Ascendancy reworks are coming. This is a sad, this is a sad card, Dreamcore. When is this from, man? When is this from? Is this from last year? Is this from like five, six months ago, man? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> For Ruthless mode, and they were going to ship all of those changes, but they kind of pulled back on them because they didn't want the negative response to Ruthless changes. So they said they had a bunch of Ascendancy reworks in the pipeline that they weren't quite happy with. And so they were going to ship them out at a later date. We then got another two in Trial of the Ancestors. But then in Affliction we had no Ascendancy reworks. Which makes me think that perhaps they're going to hold off on those for now. But I'm hopeful that we're going to see some of those Ascendancy reworks yeah. in this patch. Even if it's only one. Surely it's the Gladiator. <laughs> Please rework the Gladiator. It needs... <laughs> another card. The weakest Ascendancy of Path of Exile. <laughs> What? Borderline bullying him? Illustrious Kai, you can't be serious. Dreamcore and I talk all the time. I am merely jesting right now. <laughs> he knows. He's playing into it. Look, he's brought it up again. He's even doing the zoom in. It's desperate help. And prediction number two for the buffs is Blood Magic. Oh. Now, Blood Magic was on my list for the buff predictions for 3.23 Affliction. And in a way, we did get a buff to Blood Magic in that league because we had the Warlock yeah. Ascendancy with the Sanguimancy yeah. branch, which just added a bunch of utility to Blood Magic. And I said from the beginning that I thought that was a test for potential new additions to the core game for Blood Magic. Yeah, yeah. And I still think that's a thing. So I expect to see buffs to Blood Magic in 3.24 in the form of some of those traits from the Sanguimancy branch going into the core game. And perhaps we could see things like the life reservation efficiency going onto the Blood Magic Keystone. 
and maybe things like the crimson power node for example that could go behind blood magic or different aspects of it could go behind blood magic just to flesh out the archetype a little bit more because it's still a bit weak right now and i think it could have a lot more going for it do you guys think they would add those wildwood ascendancy big passives as keystones onto the tree what do you guys think about that so adding some new keystones that'd be pretty sweet or do you think that they just add it into the keystones like dreamcore things i'm curious Blood Magic has been in this weird sport for a while where it has to compete with builds that reserve all of their mana against auras, and with auras being in such a powerful spot, it has a tough job doing that. So it needs more utility and more uniqueness about it. And these types of things being added to the core game would go a long way to achieving that. And buff prediction number three is Bleed. Yes, the Bleeding Ailment. I think it's going to get buffed in 3.24. It has Ooh. been in a dire place for a while. Gladiator. Melee Bleed in particular is in a terrible position. Of course, this could be changed in a big way if Gladiator gets a rework and gets a lot of interesting new tools to use with Bleed. But I think overall, <coughs> Bleed kind of needs a bit of an adjustment. We had the Ignite change to the calculation in 3.16, and ever since that happened, Ignite has been a solid meta archetype. And Bleed kind of needs a similar thing. I think it needs probably a bit of an adjustment with the calculation, mm. and maybe even an adjustment mm -hmm. to how it works. And it also needs more utility. Bleed desperately needs more interactions going on with it on the passive tree, on items, on ascendancies. I spoke about this in a previous video. Bleed has just two passive skill tree wheels on the passive. Thorium 90. You are a genius. A lacerate gladiator league start for silver. Mmm, yes. Skill tree compared to the five or six of Ignite. And Bleed could also do with things like, for example, the ensnaring arrow debuff, which makes enemies count as moving. We need access to that on melee. So there's plenty of things that could happen to Bleed, and I'm hopeful that we'll get some of those in 3.24. What about you? What do you see being nerfed and buffed in patch 3.24? Let me know in the comment section below. Perhaps I'm completely wrong with these, or perhaps you agree with me on some of them. And a big shout out to my supporters over oh, on nice. Patreon. Thank you for your support. If you want to support the growth of this channel, consider becoming a patron. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Awesome stuff, Dreamcore. What do you guys think about his predictions? What do you guys think about him? I think he's right on uh, all three nerfs. And I think he is probably going to be wrong on the actual... Let's just do full. On the actual buffs. I don't think Glad's getting touched. I don't think Glad's getting touched. Um, Blood magic. Now I've seen a few builds sprout up with that recently. I think Big Ducks did a build with Blood Magic with like a Firestorm, and it was pretty strong. But I think it would be really, really cool if they tied in the Wildwood Ascendancies into Blood Magic and those Keystones. Captain Lance does too, yeah. Yeah, good video, Dreamcore. My, uh, my predictions are different than yours. And they're slightly more unhinged. <laughs> Why are people saying we get Val Split Arrow? Is that what that is, you guys? Am I just blind? Really? I tried to look at that. And I couldn't really see the Split Arrow going on here. I'm director on Path of Exile. Is... We have a short and sweet update for you today. The breach hand chests spawned during breach encounters have Where's always the, been very annoying. Am I, to am I just blind? Is it because there's in so many? In 24, we will be changing them to no longer require clicking to open. Just run near them, and they'll open automatically. Am I blind? Where's the valve split? I must be blind, you guys. I just must be bad mechanically. Because there's the mirage we archer. No longer require clicking to open. Just run near them. Oh, the red block. Oh, I'm so silly. Oh my gosh. I thought I'm not looking at the skill bar. Jeez, nice catch, you guys. I didn't even see that in this teaser. Very nice. Well, that's awesome.
Good to see. Good to see. Ooh, yeah. That would be cool, Ferial. That would be cool, Ferial. Ooh. Okay. I love it. I had no idea. Well, that means you guys were going to get some more Val skills, which is cool. Very cool. Okay. Um, we're going to we're going to do a few probably just two maps to make sure that the quality of the stream stays good. Uh, and then we're going to call it a night everyone. Uh, so let's get into PoE and apparently there was the engine update to PoE as well. So that's cool. We are Oh, I'm logging in from a new location. Oh gosh, I need my password. Oh no. Let's go. Let's try. Oh no, 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 no. Oh no, 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 no. Oh no, no, no. This is bad. Oh, one second, everyone. I have to. I have to essentially log in. From here, what code three? Okay, we're in, everybody. All right, very nice. Okay. Specifically, do not see. Ah, there, there's Poe. Okay. Also, um, lots of people have been talking about how cool Cleave of Rage looks. So I might be doing a guide on that, you guys. Let's see how nice the new engine works. Let me know if the sound is too high. I'll probably lower it a little bit. Let me know if it's too high, you guys. Um, and we're gonna do we're gonna do uh, probably a map. Man, it is crisp. Okay, so let's do like uh, do a phoenix. Unique bosses are possessed. Let's not do that one. I just I don't I don't want to die on here. Cannot leech. That's also probably not great. That's fine. Totally fine. We don't do fizz damage, right, guys? Lose the chat. Oh my goodness. How about that? In the corner right there? You think that's too much? Oh, everything took a brief second to load there. Let me know if the quality is dipping at all on frames. Because it shouldn't be. I'm watching. We're all good. I don't see any frame drops, guys. Leave of Rage Berserker is so much fun, dude. I'd highly recommend it. And you can build it up yourself. You don't need any outside help. Oh, I just died. I'm looking at the chat. That's going to be a tough part with PoE, you guys. Streaming it. Especially like PoE 2. Watching the chat. I can't believe streamers don't die more. Oh, it was, uh... It was the mana. Ah, Dream Core. I was looking at the chat, man. I rarely die on this map. On this, uh... On this character. I got to like uh, 99 by myself. Oh, it would be so beautiful if I didn't need to use totems. I would love it. Yeah, look at my HP, you guys. See, look, look how I just instantly died there, you guys. I mean, look, uh, 
my HP if you see it, and then like I completely rely on overleech and leeching. If you look at my uh, charm setup, it relies on the charms in this league, especially with getting max rage stacks and everything. I need to have the charm set up so in case I die again. Like he can one tap me with ease. What were the mods on this map, you guys? Plus 52% fizz damage reduction. And they had endurance charges. That's why I was doing such little damage there. Yeah. Okay. Well, it looks like the stream quality. Jekko, Jekko. Very nice. Yeah. I have low HP. 100%. Okay. Well, stream quality literally did not dip a single time in terms of frames, everyone. So it looks like we finally have everything solved and that's good because we stream one more time this saturday at 5 a.m eastern time for those european viewers and then i fly out to la sunday morning i leave for the airport 5 a.m my time so i'm gonna be busy all sunday making content in la hopefully with other content creators gonna meet zizarin darth micro transaction lots of other people too and then on monday i have the event and it's going to be so swell and so exciting. I'm honored that Grinding Gear Games is giving me this opportunity. And I really am thankful for all of your support, you guys, with the videos, with the streams, with everything. Thank you so much. That's all for tonight. That's all for this one. Tala Moana, Exiles.